Today we're going to continue on in standard 5 with solving equations. We're going to stick with one step equations, um, but as a reminder, our goal for this standard is to get the variable on a side by itself so that we can determine its value. Um, while we're doing this, it's also important to remember the golden rule of solving equations is that we must do the same thing to both sides. So if you do it to one side of the equation, you have to do it to the other side of the equation as well. Today we're going to use some hands-on manipulatives to help us visualize what's actually occurring in our equations while we're solving. Uh, but before we can start, we need to determine what each one represents. That way we understand what's actually occurring in our equations. So this green bar up at the top, this is going to be mostly referred to as x, a positive x. It could be any variable that we don't know the value of. The red bar right below it is what we'll refer to as a negative x. And then this yellow is just going to represent 1, positive 1. And the red below it, the little red, is going to represent a negative 1. The last thing we have to make sure we understand before we start with the strategy is something called a zero pair. And a zero pair occurs when we have a positive and a negative together because we have a positive one and a negative one. When we add them together, it ends up equaling zero, and that's why we call it a zero pair. The first equation we're going to model with our algebra tiles today is the equation x plus 5 equals 7. When we use algebra tiles, we like to use this t-chart because it helps us keep the different parts of the equation separate, and that way we can make sure that we're doing the same thing to both sides and following that golden rule. So again, we're going to use this long green bar to represent our x, and then we're going to use 5 yellow tiles to represent the plus 5. On the right side of our equation, we have 7, so we need 7 yellow tiles to represent that. So again, when we're solving equations, our goal is to try and get that variable on a side by itself, meaning that we want the value of the left side of this equation to be equal to just an x. But right now, it's equal to an x plus 5. This is where our idea of zero pairs comes in. By creating zero pairs, I can eliminate that value of 5 so that this side only has a value of x. So I'm going to take red tiles and match them up with each of those yellow tiles on the left side. So now on the left side of my equation, all these zero pairs cancel each other out and we're left with just a value of x. But that golden rule says whatever I do to the left side of the equation, I must do to the right side. So that means I must now add 5 red tiles to the right side of the equation. Now that I've added five red tiles to the right side of my equation, I can see that all of these ones have created zero pairs and are going to cancel each other out, but these two are left by themselves. This means if I clear out all the zero pairs from the left side and the right side of my equation, I can easily see that x is equal to a positive 2. In our second problem, we're going to model a subtraction problem. In this one, we have x minus 3 equals 8. So on the left side, we need to have an x, and then we also need to have minus 3. We usually think about minus 3 as taking away 3, but it's also the same thing as a negative 3. So I'm going to use 3 red tiles to represent that negative 3. Now on the right side, I need to have a positive 8. So now I've set up the equation x minus 3 equals 8. And again, when we're solving equations, our goal is to get the variable on a side by itself. So right now, where I have an x, I also have a negative 3. So I can use that idea of zero pairs to cancel out the negative 3 and just be left with the value of x. The only thing is, now I have added three yellow tiles to the left side, which means I also need to add three yellow tiles to the right side. Now that I've done the same thing to both sides of the equation, I can clear out my zero pairs. And now I can see that x is equal to 11. In our third example, we're going to model a multiplication problem. We now have the problem 5x equals 15. So again, 5x just means we have 5 groups of x. Multiplication is really just repeated addition. So on the left side of my equation, I now have 5x. On the right side now, we want to have 15. So we're going to use the yellow tiles to represent that. And when I place them, because I'm trying to figure out what the value of 1x is, I'm going to place one yellow tile according to 1x. 
When I line them up this way, it's very easy to see that this x is equal to the 3 on this side. This x is equal to this 3. And it does that all the way down. This means that 1x is going to be equal to 3. For our final example with the algebra tiles, we're going to look at a division problem. On one side we have x divided by 3, and on the other side of our equation it says that it's equal to 4. So division requires a little bit of imagination because we've been using this tile to represent an x. But now when we have x divided by 3, we're thinking about splitting this tile into three different parts. So really we need to visualize it more like this one here. And when we have x divided by 3 equals 4, it means that one third of this tile is actually going to be equal to the 4 that's on the other side. So we might actually just be thinking about one third of x is equal to 4. So if we want to solve to figure out what the entire value of x is, we can either think about it as adding another third and then adding another third to get a total of three thirds or one whole, or we can think about taking one of the thirds and multiplying by three again to get a whole. Either way that you think about it, we need to do the same thing to the other side. So if I'm thinking about one third and I'm going to add a third, if I add a third to the left side, this was the value of a third, I need to add that value to the right side. So now I have two thirds would be equal to eight, but I want to figure out what three thirds or one whole is. So I need to add one more third and that means on the right side I would need to add four more yellow tiles. So it would end up being that x3 of the one third pieces would make a 1x and that would be equal to 12. So x would equal 12.